Welcome to Coffee and Crochet with Sarah and Maximo. <laughs> he looks awesome today, doesn't he, in his new chicky bandana for Easter? Now, I wanted to bring him first in the front of the video because I've gotten a lot of questions about how little Maximo is doing. And I appreciate all the messages and all the emails and just everyone who has been asking how little Maximo is doing. And he's doing fantastic. You can even tell where that little tumor on the back of his head was. It's gone. They did a great job at our vet and they're the best vets in town. I love them. And I have him here also because he's showing you our Easter chick bandana. He's not real happy because he's wanting his like second morning nap, okay? <laughs> so I'm going to let him go sit down. Say bye-bye, Maxie. <laughs> I'm going to put him over here on his couch, on his poof. And I'm so excited about today's video. While I tell you a story about something else, I want you to go and grab a five millimeter H hook and some small amount of medium weight, worsted weight, or cotton number four yarn because I'm going to show you today in our crochet together how to make some little lollipop bunnies. And the neat thing about these is once the ch the ki the chittos the children or the kiddos eat their sucker, it's a finger puppet. <laughs> and so we're gonna make those, and you can use up some of your leftover scraps and make some really fun ones. And we're gonna do that in just a minute. First, we need to clink in. All right. So I've got my cup here, all filled with my favorite coffee. Clinkity clink clink and clink some more. <laughs> and if you don't know what that means, that just means I'm here and I'm ready to have some fun with my yarny friends. <laughs> All righty. So before we do our crochet together, let me give people a, a, you know, a few minutes to get here and then we'll get started. But I wanted to tell you a story about something really super fun that happened. The other day, I don't remember what day it was, I got a message from Rita. And if you all don't know who Rita is, Rita is my right-hand man in the group. On our PPD Puppy Love group, Rita helps with making sure everybody's happy in there. And she is the most encouraging person. And she sent me a message. She said, have you seen this YouTube channel? They're giving you a shout out. And I said, no, I had never heard of it before. So I popped over there, and it was an amazing channel, by the way. And I'm going to put the link down in the notes under the video on YouTube, but I'm also going to link it on the blog, as well as I'll put her link on the P uh, Posh Pooch Designs page. And the name of the crochet channel is called Pamela's Adoring Crochet YouTube Channel. And what she had done is she had taken my bunny bags i call these my itty bitty bunny bags and it's just a bag that when you it has a drawstring and when you pull the drawstring it looks like an easter egg and then you can add the bunny ears if you want to well um she made a whole bunch of these i, I was listening to her she's from arkansas she has a wonderful accent it's really fun to listen to her and she's a really real person you know, one of the things about um, that I, re I really, really like to do shout outs for other YouTube crochet channels or even craft channels for that matter, but I'm really drawn more to people who are just real. And I found her to be that way and I really like her. And she had made a whole bunch of these. She took this bag and just dumped them out. There must have been 25 or 30 of them. And um, 
she made a whole bunch of these, used them in all different colors with her scrap yarn. She's going to fill them with goodies and give them to her church kids. And I thought that was neat. You know, sometimes we forget, you know, uh, last year we really didn't get to have a fun Easter. And I think this year we need to go all out and eat lots of, of Easter candy and give away as many gifts as we can. My granddaughter got her ears pierced, so I took her to Claire's and bought her some Easter earrings. And then my grandson and granddaughter that live in Oklahoma, I ordered them some fun things, but I'm not going to say what they are. I sent them through YouTube. They're supposed to be there this afternoon, but I'm not going to say what they are because sometimes they watch. <laughs> but anyway, this is a super fun and easy pattern. And again, you can find this on my YouTube channel. It's called the Itty Bitty Bunny Bags, okay? But you can find it in Ravelry and also on my blog. But I thought that was the nicest thing. So I wanted to give her a shout out as well. And I really want to encourage you all to go over and check out her YouTube channel. I'm going to say the name of it again if you want to search for it. Or I'm going to put the link as well. It's called her... <laughs> Her, her YouTube channel is called Pamela's Adoring Crochet YouTube Channel. Yeah, it, it, she, she just, I just, the moment I started watching her, I just liked her instantly. It was the same way the first time I watched like Cinnamon Stitches or um, there was another one, Creative Grandma. The first time I watched them, same thing with Crystal on Bag of Day. Uh, channel. The first time I watched them, I just really liked the person. And I find, when I find someone who's doing a YouTube channel and, and is just real, they're not acting, you know, sometimes we act to make ourselves look better. They aren't doing that at all. They are real people. And those are some of the channels I really, really love. Okay. Are we ready to do our crochet together and do our bunny bags? I keep looking over because remember last week we had an issue that it kept stopping. And I told my husband, I said, it better not stop today while we're doing our bunny bags. Okay. All right. I'm going to clip over. Clip. I'm trying to talk too fast. I am going to click over to the top cam so we can make bunny bags. <laughs> Let me move my coaster and so I don't knock over my coffee. <laughs> All right. So. We're not making bunny bags. We're making lollipop bunnies. <laughs> All right. So this are some that I just made with some of my leftovers. Now I used a little bit thinner yarn on this one, even though it said it was a medium weight number four. And I, and this was the first one that I did. And I added more rows because I didn't think this one was long enough. It's still cute, but see, you can kind of see the sucker poking through the holes. And so I just wanted to show you that one. It's just, in my opinion, not big enough. So we're going to take that one out. All right, and we're going to replace it with this one. All right, so I'm going to take these and move these over to give us some room here. So all you need to make these is some Tootsie Roll Pops. You can use any Tootsie Roll Pop. This is some I had left over from Valentine's Day. And uh, Blow Pop styles will work also. And it's just your basic size of a Tootsie Roll Pop. And I, uh, I get a bag at the Dollar Tree because I like to have them around for when the kids are around. And you can, I think there's eight or ten in there. So that's a good buy if you want to get them from the Dollar Tree. You are going to need one stitch marker because we're going to be stitching in the round and not joining our rounds. You're going to need an H hook, which is a 5.0 millimeter crochet hook. You need a needle to weave in ends, and you need your scissors. And then the yarn I'm using is just a beige that I have on hand. Because I don't have a beige bunny, right? Get some of these fuzzballs off my workspace. All right, so you can use any medium weight number four yarn. And you can see it takes hardly any. So get in your yarn stash, and you don't have to make them solids. Use your leftover variegated striping, whatever. And the truth is, you can change the striping on them if you want to and put a stripe around. All right, so let's get started. Let me grab my notes here and move my coffee because nobody wants spilt coffee. All right, so what we're going to do, I'm going to keep my stitch marker close. We're going to make a slip knot. And we're going to chain three chains. One, two, three. Now, a lot of people ask me, <laughs> it's kind of a, a funny thing to ask, why do I stitch in the second and not the third? And the reason that I do this is it gives me that third stitch to hang on to. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right, so I've chained three. 
We're going to stitch seven single crochets in the second chain from the hook. We never count the loop on our hook, so one, two. Go in, pull up a loop, yarn over, go through both loops. So there's one, two, three, four, and see why I'm hanging on to that one? <laughs> Five, I'll move it out of the way. Six and seven. Now I'm going to mark that seventh stitch with my stitch marker. So I have seven single crochets. Now you'll notice there's a hole in the center. Don't worry about that. We'll fix that in just a second. Now we're not going to join. We're going to go right in this next stitch and we're going to stitch two single crochets in each of those seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, oops, get in there, <laughs> eleven, twelve, this brings us to our last stitch from our last row, thirteen and fourteen. Now I'm going to grab that stitch marker, and if you don't have a stitch marker, you can use a safety pin, a paper clip, or even just another piece of yarn to hook in there that's a different color, so you know where to mark your rows. So we had seven on our first row, and we have 14 single crochets on our second row. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to stitch one single crochet in each of the stitches around, and this is going to bring in the sides so that we'll start forming the shape of our little bunny. And the third row is going to have 14 stitches because we didn't add or subtract any stitches. We just stitched one single crochet in each single crochet around. So I'm going to pull out my stitch marker, make my last stitch, and then grab my stitch marker and stick it back in. All right, so row three, I'm going to turn it over this way because this is my front. So we have seven, 14, and 14. And so now what we're going to do for row four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10, that's five, six, seven more rows, we're just going to continue stitching one single crochet in each of the single crochets around. Now, if you want to make these a little bit smaller, you can use a thinner yarn, maybe a three light, and go down a hook size maybe to a G. If you're making them for a little bit smaller Tootsie Roll Pops or even just any little lollipop that you have. All right, so now I'm at row four. I'm not going to take that stitch marker out. I'm going to go ahead and stitch in that spot, and then I'm just going to move my stitch marker. That way I can count my rows and just keep right on going, and I'll count down from my stitch marker instead of moving it every row. Because I want to go down to row 10 from the top. And so I'll just continue stitching single crochets all the way around. And so what I would do if I'm going to finish this whole thing, which I am not because it would take us way too long to stitch that many rows live. All right, so I'm going to grab this one right here. This one has 10 rows and then we have a row of slip stitches and I'm going to show you how to do that on this beige one real quick. So we have our first row has seven and then our next row has 14 and then every row has 14 up through row 10. All right, so we're going to pretend like I'm on row 10, moving on to row 11. And so what you're going to do is you want to form this edge because we want it to help hold its shape. And so instead of stitching a single crochet in each stitch, you're going to stitch 
a slip stitch. And so you go in, pull up a loop, pull that loop through the loop on your hook. And this is just going to help the edge of the bunny hold its shape. All right, almost around. All right, so here I am back around here. And then I'll just cut my yarn. I'll go under that stitch and pull that loop to the inside and tie that off. Now, before we make the bunny ears, I want to deal with this hole. And I'll show you what you'll do. You'll turn your bunny inside out. And if you prefer to use a magic circle for the top of this, you certainly can. You'll thread that yarn on your needle. And then you'll just stitch around that hole. And gather that closed. Nobody wants a hole in the top of their bunny's head. <laughs> and you just stitch it until it's nice and closed and clip it and turn it back over. And then you'll also have to weave this one in as well. And of course, that's not the size of the bunny. This is slip stitch around. And now I'm going to show you how to make those really simple bunny ears. And I'll attach them to this little one just so you can see how to do that. All right, so what you're going to do to make the bunny ears is you're going to chain six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now we're going to slip. I'm sorry, I said slip stitch. Now we're going to single crochet in the second chain from the hook, and then we'll single crochet in those next stitches. All right, now you're going to chain six again. Again, single crochet in the second chain from the hook and single crochet in those next four stitches. One, two, three, and four. Now you're just going to cut it off and make sure you have enough to attach it to the top of your bunny. All right, so here's our little bunny ears. And I like that they're a little bit wonky and not perfect, you know, not perfectly straight. Because <laughs> bunnies are kind of wonky. <laughs> All right, so now you're going to take your hook and just jam it up in there and pull one of those strings in. And then you'll go to the other side across and grab that other string. Pull that in there. Turn it back over. Move that one out of the way. And then you'll just tie some knots in there to make sure those ears are going to stay put. And you know, I like to do three. One, two, and three. And if you're giving these to some kids um, to play with or whatever, and you're worried about the ears coming off, grab that Aileen's fabric glue, put a little glue on that knot, let it dry, and then you can flip it back over. Okay. Now this one looks like it'll fit on top of a little egg, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's it's not going to fit this one. <laughs> but this is how they work. And they're super fun. Now, you'll notice I don't have any eyes on here or nose or a bunny tail. You can add all of those details if you want to. One thing to keep in mind, if you're making these for younger children, don't use safety eyes or buttons that can be pulled off and choked on. I would suggest if you want to add a face to embroider it on and maybe sew on a little pom-pom for a tail. But I like them plain. I think they're fun. And I think they'll look really cute sitting in the basket that I made a few weeks ago. You know, our tulip basket. I think it'll look really cute in that. And so aren't they fun? They're just super fun, super easy. And they're great to give. And also, like I said, they make fun finger puppets <laughs> so have some fun with those get in your yarn stash and come up with all different colors you don't have to make pastels like i did you know and they're just i, I it's just one of those things that's just super fun uh sometimes 
Um, yeah, Tammy asked, could you use the magic circle? You certainly can. I just really prefer the way that, that I uh, close it up. It's just a preference. I have not had good luck with the magic circle. If you have, go right, you know, go ahead. Remember what I always say is you do what works best for you. <laughs> All righty. So what happened this week at Posh Pooch Designs? Well, a lot, actually. And before we get into our new patterns and videos, I'm going to get some coffee. Coffee break. <laughs> okay, now, I showed you Maximo at the beginning of the video. If you missed it, when this is over, go back and watch it, because he is adorable. He is the, the best little poochy pooch ever. I love my little chihuahua. Okay, uh, well, I love his sister Rosie, too, so they're both the best. <laughs> he had on the little chick bandana, and that's one we did this week, and it was kind of a special request. This is a bunny, and here's a little white one, little pet bandanas. And the way the pattern works is you start at the bottom, at, you know, of the uh, shape, and you work your way up, and so you can make it as big as you want to for any pet that you want to, dog, animal, goat, whatever. And um, these were a special request. I work with a couple of different dog rescues, um, not as much now as I used to, but that I had this one particular one. They like to send home a, a little bandana or something when a dog is adopted for their, um, you know, forever home. And so um, she asked me, did I have some patterns? Because they'll use the patterns and they'll make up a whole bunch of them. And I said, well, I don't have one for Easter, but I've got one in mind. And so I got it done and she just loved it. Um, they made more of the little chickies than the bunnies because of the ears um they just sort they're afraid that they would you know get caught and that's that's you know like i said even with the buttons on these if your dog's a chewer don't add the buttons uh, because they can chew that off and if they're small dogs like mine they can choke on that so so we have to be smart about it but they're super cute super cute bandanas and like i said they work on any size dog or cat or pet the other thing we did is we did the in like a lion, out like a lamb, coasters. These are so fun. <laughs> you can make both of them with the same pattern. It's just a matter of when you change colors. The, e the ears are the same. It's just the placement of the ears. And the face is the same. Isn't that cute? And they're a lot of fun. And if you don't know what in like a lion, out like a lamb means, it's talking about the weather in March. And I'm telling you, March is the snowiest month in Colorado, and we have had so much snow, and I'm not complaining because I love spring snow. It was snowing this morning when I got up. It was 75 degrees yesterday, and it's 18 degrees today. Let me look. It's up to 25. I just looked on my phone. 25 degrees. That's Colorado and spring in Colorado, and I love it. I'm not complaining a bit, and so th that's what these have to do with is in, in like a lion, out like a lamb. They're super fun. And so they also make good appliques if you want to put them on a blanket or something. So anyway, I thought those were fun, and so we did those. The other thing we did is this shawl that's behind me. And this was a, I have, I have made this shawl a bunch of times. And someone asked me if I had done it recently, and I said, no, I haven't. And so they wanted to make it for their mom that's in a nursing home. And she wanted to give it to her for Mother's Day. And it's a wonderful shawl because it's called Spring in the Summer. It's a lacy open work shawl. It's done in waves. And you can add a button if you want to because, let me just grab a button here just to show you. If you add a button to it, I'm using a bright one so you can see it. Let's say I sewed it on here. The holes in the shawl make it so you can just button right over that. And... A lot of you know uh, when senior citizens are in nursing homes, they, they might lose their shawl. It might come off. So if you can put a button or two on there, that's going to help them keep it on. And that's what this particular lady wanted. And she loved how it turned out. She did hers in ombres. And I, I hope she'll send me a picture because it's in blue ombres. Her mother loves blue. And so this is our spring in to summer shawl. 
And this is the big cake, and you can make this with one big cake. I believe it's uh, 10 and a half ounces that it takes. So, see how lacy it is? <laughs> I love this, y'all. Now my hair has electricity. <laughs> okay, so the other thing we did is this Chevron Open Scarf. And I did this because I had a, a couple of questions. I'm trying to move out of the way here. I had a couple of questions about... I have a bunch of yarn. It's two to three ounces, uh, sometimes more. Or I have just one skein of yarn. It's a beautiful color. I don't want to put it in the craft bin or the, the scrap bin. Okay? And so I came up with this because I had some of this left. And this is just Red Heart Ombre and Violet. And it's an open um, chevron. And you don't have to put any trim on it. You just work it up, and it's repeat rows of two. And you decrease on the beginning and end of every row. And it's a really simple pattern. It's a really great take-along pattern. It, it, it's just really fun, and it's perfect for spring. But I have to tell you a funny story this morning about this shawl, or um, this scarf. I was looking all over for my purple and pink blouse because I wanted to look springy today for our video. And I looked all over my closet. I could not find it. And so I put this one on, which I like this blouse too. And then I walked in here and I realized I had stuck it on my mannequin. <laughs> I have to, to film underneath the scarf. And I thought, oh, well, I'll wear that one on Easter. <laughs> it was so funny. Sometimes I do the silliest things, right? <laughs> All righty. Well, that's everything today. We got a lot. We had a lot, got a lot done and had a lot to talk about. And it's been lots and lots of fun. I hope you'll make a bunch of these bunnies because they are a lot of fun to play with. And I have a feeling my granddaughter and I are going to be playing with these this week. <laughs> They're just fun. Here's my favorite color. <laughs> All righty. Now, if you tuned in late and you missed the tutorial, go ahead and watch it. It's a lot of fun. And um, just... <laughs> They're just fun. It's okay to be silly sometimes, you know? All right, let me check my notes. Make sure I talked about everything I wanted to say. Okay, now next Tuesday, it'll be the first Tuesday in April. And so I'll be announcing what the April giveaway is, and I'm really excited about it. It's kind of funny because when it got here, I wanted to keep it again. <laughs> It's like every time I open up something that, that, that came in for a giveaway, I love it. I want to keep it for myself, but I won't. <laughs> okay, so next Tuesday, I'll be announcing what the April giveaway is. And then also, we're going to have a conversation or talk about... Um, it's a question I got this week, and I, I hadn't really thought about it. But what's the difference between stitching in the chain two space or stitching in the chain twos, the chain two, okay? And I was kind of surprised I hadn't really gotten that, that question before because I've been crocheting for years and I forget, you know. Um, and so don't ever feel bad if you have a question and you think it might be a silly question because there aren't any silly questions. We are all, like I say, I've said a hundred times, at a different place in our crochet journey. And just because you've been crocheting for over 40 years like I have, doesn't mean you know everything. Because, like I always say again, crochet is an ever-growing and ever-changing art. New fibers, new tools, and lots of new fun, okay? So make sure you turn, tune in next Tuesday to find out what the April giveaway is. I know you're going to like it because I do. I'll see you next week and have a happy Happy, happy celebration on Sunday. <music>